Hey folks, in this video I'd like to talk about uh, creating Flora and introduce you into the uh, 101 of Flora, basically, you know, the, the base knowledge you'll have to have to create um, plants and collections. Now, Flora works using two different um, files. One is called the plant collection and one is called the plant layout. Since all plants are generated procedurally, um, the layout stores a description of how to create a single plant and a collection stores the description of which plant layouts to combine to create uh, several plants. So to start off, what we'll have to do is we'll just have to create a new collection. So we'll go to connect collection menu, new collection, and then say uh, test collection, let's say. Then we go to the plants menu and say new plant, and again call this test plant, let's say. Great, so now this will have created the very first basic layout, as you can see. Um, and that doesn't uh, look like a full plant yet, but it has two layers attached already. In Flora, you can um, add and remove layers, and there's two types of layers. One is called the stem layer, which represents a trunk or uh, a branch, and then there's a leaf layer that represents leaves. Right now, as you can see, there's stem layer zero and stem layer one. Each layer has its own parameters and can be tweaked. So if I go to stem layer zero, um, I can, for example, tweak the length by just moving that slider and I can, you know, play with all the different settings this stem has. For example, here you can see there's some bend controls and some other controls. Each of these sliders has um, controls for also creating variation and um, ranges. Now if we just move to stem layer 1, which is the second layer in this plant, you can see if I pull on the length, all the stem in that layer are being changed. If I hit the middle mouse and drag, I can change the variation and the randomness of that parameter. This becomes more obvious if we increase the number of branches um, even more. Um, so now you can see how that affects um, this. Furthermore, you can also double click the slider to, so to say, explode the slider, and you're going to get a minimum and a maximum range. Um, this is minimum and maximum based on the U value of the parent stem. So you can see this is the tip and this is the bottom. So you can drive these separately and also drive variations on top of that using metal mouse on each of the two handles. Um, this works for any slider, so you can see that you know we have things like the split angle that drives how much and where it's split. Um, you can change the settings by, for example, making them split just a little bit at the bottom and a lot at the top. Aside from the controls that you can see in the sliders, there's also a numeric input boxes below each slider that you can show by just clicking on the small arrow on the right side. So for example, for the split angle, if you just open it, you'll see that we have a minimum maximum value and a variation. If you click further, you get access to additional settings that include incremental settings um, and modular settings for these as well. So you can just cycle through these uh, if you keep clicking on that triangle. So in the top here, you can see that you know we have access to modifying layers. We can create new layers, we can create sibling layers remove layers and you know do the same for branches as well as leaves. Now if we just say create a leaf layer um, we can have a quick look at the parenting functionality. Um, parenting in Flora works by a def ID so you can see right now we're parenting to the last stem layer only. Now if we were to go ahead and create a new branch layer uh, prior to that you'll see how the leaves are now jumping to that layer um, if we went ahead and, for example, changed the, la the parent layer, you can see how they're now uh, being applied on the corresponding layer um, for branches. Um, furthermore, you can create um, branches as well um, on the particular parent layer. So, for example, if we were to color this layer uh, in a dark red, let's say, and we want an exact same uh, layer next to these as a sibling, you can just go ahead and say modify new sibling branch layer and that will create another uh, set of branches on the same def le level. Um, to visualize this, I'm just going to move them into a U area, which is very uh, distinct, and also make them really short. Uh, so now you can see them better. And as you can see, now we have this additional group of branches sitting 
at the bottom of each of the parent branches. Um, for the leaves, you can also decide if you want to parent them by depth or if you want to parent them by layer. This means that you can decide if you want to have them sit on all the branches of a certain depth or just on a particular one. So in this case, they're sitting on these red ones. If we increase the ID, they're going to jump onto this layer. Um, all this together you know, provides you a large amount of control and allows you to manage very complex structures um, within Creation Flora. In the next video section, we're going to look at um, how the skinning can be deployed and how OBJs are um, skinned onto the skeletal structure of the tree. Aside from just rendering um, straight lines instead of flora, you can also use OBJ files. These OBJ files will have to be put into a folder uh, consecutively. So basically, you just put them into a folder. You can create subfolders, and um, that way you'll be able to manage all of them. Instead of the skinning menu, you can then say, I want to use a particular OBJ folder and use all of the OBJs. Our uh, threaded parsers will then load all of them and make them available inside of the UI. Right, so if we just go ahead and want to skin this up, we can start by clicking at the first stem layer, and then we go ahead and just, for example, use a particular branch. Again, these are min and max values so that you can choose between multiple OBJ files within the same layer if you want. Um, so this has been skinned up now. Um, with the thickness slider, you, for example, you can um, define how well thick the layer is going to be, and you can also use min and max values to do tapering uh, if you want. Um, we'll do the same for the second layer, so we'll choose the same branch OBJ file and just slightly uh, change the thickness here as well. And finally, we'll do the same thing for um, the third stem layer, but this time I'm going to use a different OBJ file which has already a tapered end. And in here, I'm just going to lower the thickness as well a bit. So as you can see, we now have um, a full 3D geometry um, and this is all skinned against the skeletal structure, so you can still play with all the settings. So for example, I can go into the stem layer 0 and go ahead and change the relative length, or I can go in and perform bending, which will actually deform the OBJ files. For this, of course, um, you know the resolution of the OBJ file will have to be sufficient to perform that deformation. As you can see in this case, uh, it's very low, uh, very low resolution OBJ file. Um, additionally, just to the stem, you can also use OBJ files on the leaves. So we can go ahead and create a leaf layer on top of the last ones here and then choose, for example, leaf A, which is just a square um, to put on there. And as you can see, we can now see all the leaves. We can, you know, change them in size, various in size, uh, give them variation in color and place them up really quickly. Since this is using um, I mean, a max setting, you can also mix different OBJ files for leaves. So in this case, I've just picked between the square and this additional leaf shape that I've put in. Um, if you pick both to be the same, well, you're going to get the exact same um, leaf for all the instances. Um, aside from just pure meshes, you can also, if you place um, named JPEG files, um, you know, I'll reference the documentation here. So basically, um, you'll have to um, put JPEG files into the OBJ folder structure that refer, well, to the um, diffuse specular opacity and bump channels. And they will be picked up by our importers automatically, and you will be able to see them. So if we just go ahead and switch to another um, instance, for example, choose a leaf A from um, asset 1919, and we'll switch to the end. Um, we'll be able to see this opacity-based alpha and the diffuse texture as well. Um, so if we just zoom in, you can see how these are textured. And they're also, they're just squares, but they're cut in opacity um, using a proper map. So this allows you to use uh, fully textured surfaces. We could also, for example, go ahead and choose a different branch uh, trunk object, which is textured as well. So I'll just jump in here and pick that. Um, and as you can see, we can now see that texture on top of here as well. The thickness will have to be that bit as well since it's a slightly bigger OBJ file. Um, aside from the changes that I've just shown you, you can also use the coloring, the vertex coloring, to tint the textures. So in this case, this is the base color of the texture, but we can choose the min and max values of our um, 
vertex colors to tint to tint them and provide variation to the textures in a really easy and quick fashion. Um, that way you can quickly set up complex leaf structures uh, and still make them look very uh, natural. That's it for this uh, session. Uh, we'll continue in the next video section. Aside from just pure random orientation of the leaves and the branches, we also support sun position based orientation. Um, for that, you'll find two additional parameters, uh, actually three parameters, both in the leaf and the stem layers. These allow you to, um, well, orient leaves according to the sun position. Now, um, if we just increase the value of the sun y look at, for example, the leaves are going to turn and face upwards as good as they can to y. Um, while just rotating around their own y-axis. If you use the x look at as well, they're going to flatten out and become oriented towards the sun. As you can see now, they're fully flat. Um, so, you know, of course, these values can be randomized. Again, using Model Mouse, you can uh, randomize them to create um, a natural look. Um, on top of that, you, you then have a local x-axis uh, rotational offset that you can see here. So that way I can have them, um, for example, hang down slightly and make that random as well to create a certain layout. But as you can see, now we're getting a layout that's more natural looking for a tree uh, without having to sacrifice any of the flexibility in the system. One other uh, thing to note here is that, you know, this is fully procedural driven. Um, so you can still go back and modify any of the leaf branches. So for example, if we just went in and changed some of the bendiness uh, you'll see how the leaves still orient correctly towards the sun. And, you know, we can, for example, twist up the tree branches um, and create a rotational uh, layout, and this will still look um, and orient correctly towards the sun. In the next video section, we're going to look at duplication and cloning. All right, so in this section, we're just going to look at cloning um, and duplication. Now, as you can see, um, each flora plant has a manipulator at the bottom, uh, which is a circle, which I can use to move around the plant. I can also hold shift and rotate the plant. I can hold down control and scale the plant. Now, if you just want to create another plant of the same layout, you can, you know, you can always go ahead and just drop down um, the upper area of the UI and, for example, change the seed. This is going to create a different plant um, well, another plant of the same species, if you will, just changing the seed overall. Now, um, what you can also do, just aside from changing the single plant, is create another duplicate of that. So while the plant selected, so while you're seeing the ring, just go to Plants, Duplicate Selected Plant. This will uh, create another copy of that plant and change the seed slightly. Um, so that way, um, you're going to get a slightly different variation of the same species. Um, you can keep doing that, um, and it will keep adding plants in while, you know, using a uniform scaling for each one. So as you can see, I can very quickly generate uh, copies of this particular species. Um, since these are all copies, um, we'll, you know, start with a fresh scene uh, by reloading the plant uh, collection uh, when we look at the clones. So I'll just go ahead and reload my test collection. There we are again, uh, as in the beginning. So now what we can do is we can, aside from just duplicating plants, which will make create a dip, um, different and disconnected version, uh, we can also clone the plant. So if we just hit clone, we're going to get a different uh, plant, which will be the exact clone of the previous one. So now you know we can manually change the seed, for example, and all the changes performed on the original plant will affect the clone. So just for the purpose of the demo, I'm just going to create another clone and again change the seed. So as you can see, um, we have three plants of the same species in here, and we can now go ahead and style them. Now, if we, while we have this, the first one selected, go ahead, go ahead and perform certain changes, these changes will then be um, moved into all of the clones. Now, if we just select the stem layer, for example, and we change the length, uh, you'll see how when we do this, all of the three plants change length because they're, uh, the clones are reacting to the master plant. We can also go ahead and, for example, change the relative length of the stem and make them shorter. You'll see how that changes 
uh, are, again, are distributed towards all the clones. Now, if we select one of the clones, however, we can uh, perform these changes here and, so to say, disconnect settings. So if we go ahead and go to stem layer um, one, we can now go ahead and shorten the stem of that particular clone, and it's only going to change that clone. Um, for the sake of the demo, I'm also going to change the coloring of the leaves. So I'll just go to the leaves layer and make them all uh, reddish, let's say, like this. Um, and now if we go back to the original plant and we change the color, you can see how the red clone, which we haven't modified, reacts correctly while the central one uh, stays with its own particular color. Um, so this is just a quick look at cloning and how uh, procedural layouts within Flora can be uh, referencing each other. In the next video, we're going to look at simulation. In this section of the video, we're going to look at simulation. Um, so to start off, I'm just going to create a new collection and call it uh, simulation, let's say. And I'm going to create a quick plant and I'll call it simulation test, let's say. Um, to create some more complexity, uh, let's just go ahead and um, increase the number of stem that we're seeing. So I'm just going to increase uh, the number of stem here a lot. And then I'm just going to go in and uh, create a new branch layer and another one just to very quickly create some complexity. Um, then I'm also going to adapt the uh, length of these layers just by changing the length and adding some relative length to that. Um, yeah, so this gives us a pretty good complex uh, structure. You can see that you know uh, Flora uses uh, um, an FK hierarchy to perform simulation. So every single stem is actually being um, rotated as in an FK hierarchy. And Flora comes with a pre-made test component that you can use to you know, push your um, plant through some wavy, uh, directional, and random motion uh, just to get a feeling for the simulation. Um, within our DCC integrations, within Maya and Softimage, you can then drive the tree with custom forces. You know, but the standalone provides you a good way of um, figuring out the simulation settings for the plant already. So if I just hit play, you can see how the plant now uh, reacts to the random field. And, you know, I can go ahead and have it play through. I can also add, add a directional motion by just pulling on the slider to get a feeling for the strength uh, of the settings and, you know, how much the plant reacts to my forces. Um, we can then go ahead and go into the certain layers and change the simulation settings. For example, here you can drive how much the plant is going to form versus rotate. Um, and how stiff the layers are going to be. So I'm just going to lower the stiffness on the first layer, and for the second layer, I'm also going to enable simulation deformation completely and lower the, the stiffness a little bit more. So now our plant is going to react more and will bend as well while going through. So you can see how this a major stem is now, um, you know, deforming and rotating. So this is just a quick look at the simulation settings. You can also use um, the just lines mode for in case you had skin meshes. You know, you can do the same thing with skinned meshes, of course, you know, but the display performance is going to be a little bit better if you just use lines. So here's a quick um, flag of enabling that if you had skin meshes in the scene. In this section of the video, we're going to look at the DCC integrations. Um, in this case, Autodesk Soft Image. Uh, Creation Flora is also available for Autodesk Maya uh, at this point. So let's just go ahead and have a look at the custom menu. So you'll see that once you've loaded the plugin, you know, in Soft Image or Maya, um, you'll get access to the custom menu, which holds all the same um, controls as um, the menus in the Soft Image, in the standalone version. So let's just go ahead and create a new plant collection. Uh, I'll just call this uh, Soft Image, let's say. And this will now compile Flora and make um, load it up um, basically uh, the first time you use it it's going to compile the application from scratch and load it up uh, this will ensure you know that you never have to rebuild um, the plugin even though the system might change in functionality right so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to call show UI which is going to give us access to the component UI as you can see so we get access to all the settings as in the standalone version um, so let's just go ahead and create a new plant so I'll just say new plant layout and I call this uh, soft image test as you can see this will now have created um, the new 
the new plant and it's fully integrated into our rendering so we can go ahead and play with all the settings the exact same way. Um, just for your edification I'm just going to create a couple of more layers so you can see I can create a new branch layer um, the same way I was doing that in the standalone and I can also uh, create a, a leaf layer let's say. Uh, we can also go ahead and um, access the uh, all the settings so I can go in and for example choose a particular leaves so I'm just going to pick uh, this leave uh, OBJ file and as you can see we get full access to our aim occlusion uh, real-time texturing and you know full access to all the uh, real-time renderer options now I could also go ahead and for example put um, a branch onto that main object so I could go ahead and you know tweak this up so that um, the thickness and things works correctly for this particular tree and um, edit it here. If you save this tree or this plant collection rather um, you will then be able to use it within Maya or within the standalone since the files being used are um, completely generic and uh, load and save everywhere. In the next section of the video we're going to look at simulation instead of a DCC. Since plants will have to react to forces um, that are originated in you know, a shot-specific environment, for example, in a 3D scene instead of Maya or Softimage, um, you can use Creation Flora and its really fast simulation engine while driving the forces from the DCC. And what I've done in this example is I've created a, uh, a point cloud and I've used ice with some pre-made compounds to set up firstly a single particle representing that plant and secondly using a custom node uh, wrapped by a compound to drive the forces within the plant um, system. So you know if you go in you'll see that there's two custom compounds uh, used. One which retrieves all the stem points uh, for all the stem inside of that plant and secondly another one that sets all the forces for that particular plant. Now what I'm going to do is so I'm just going to hit play and you'll see that you know now there's some ambient motion happening. Um, I'll just change the frame range a little bit to have a lot of time. Now I'm just going to play this back and while it's playing you know I'm just going to take that control object here and interact with the scene. Now you can see that this object is introducing a new force to the scene which is a directional force and you know the bigger I make it the more effect it will have and you can see how the hierarchical structure of the plant is being affected based on the settings that we originally chose when designing the plant. Aside from this directional force, we can also use a turbulence based forces as, as you can see in here to affect the plant and have it interact um, with let's say an angle field. But really since it's you know based on the ice integration or in my own that hypergraph, um, you'll be able to drive the plants with any force um, that you desire. This also works for things like grass uh, or flowers and things um, where you don't have a single plant but maybe lots of stem on the ground. Um, this is just a quick look at simulation instead of a DCC. Um, next we're going to look at the Arnold integration. In this section of the video we're going to look at the Arnold integration and first you know first of all we're going to look at how it works within the DCC. So in this case when looking at um, Autodesk Soft Image um, we can see that when we use a menu entry called Arnold Update Standards, we'll have created two objects. One is referred to as the OBJ collection, which is a gallery of all the OBJ files that are used to generate any of the plants. Um, this is basically, you know, all the single OBJ files which lives within that OBJ folder I was mentioning earlier. And each of these um, has basically a cluster that is named by the OBJ name and then holds a material which is named by the OBJ name as well. Um, aside from the collection, which you can use to put on the shaders, um, there's an, uh, what's called a plant, which is a bounding box that represents that plant in this context. Now, you know, since we're now doing the shading and all that and using the offline renderer, we can also offload um, the plant collection um, to make the scene lighter. And now this will have removed the plant and just stuck uh, and kept the bounding box. Um, this means we can no longer interact with the plant, but of course, you know, we can now set up the shaders. Now. I have three shaders on this plant because I've been using three different OBJ files. Um, the branch A, the branch B, and the leaves. So what I'm going to do just to explain this quickly, um, for the branch A, 
Uh, I'm just going to stick with a constant color. So I'm just going to choose the color green, let's say. And for the other branch, I'm going to choose the color blue. And finally, for the OBJ index 2, which holds the leaf shader, I'm just going to create an image map um, based on the op opacity um, and the original color. So let's just go in and pick these images. So I'm just going to say from file, and then you know I'll just search for them. So I'll just choose leave, uh, which is this image, and then I'll have to have another one which drives the opacity. So I'll just connect it up to opacity, and here I'm just going to choose new from file leave opacity map. Right, now this will have set up our leave. We'll have to do one more thing, which is we'll have to set up an Arnold property which drives um, and sets up the opaqueness of that object. So I'll just make sure the renderer knows it's not opaque. And finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a uh, sky shader so that there's some light in the scene. So I'll just add that in as well. Uh, great, that should be it. Now we'll just open up the render options and output this uh, to a particular path. So just output to E rendering and hit export frame. Now in the next section of the video, we'll open up Kick and Arnold to render out that tree. Right, so before we render it, um, let's just have a quick look at the AS file, which stores you know, the procedural information. So as you can see, you know, this is the AS file that I've just exported from Softimage. And if we just pull down, you can see at some point, here is the procedural. So the procedural basically describes which uh, library to use to generate the topology. And here you can see we're using the DSO Python application. It also says you know which plant collection was used and which plant index. So in this case, it's the first plant from the Softimage plant collection that we've just saved out at this time. Now, as you can also see, here's all the shaders that we've defined. And these are then going to be automatically distributed onto the plant uh, when rendered. So um, let's just go over to the command line and I'll launch kick with this particular AS file. Now, uh, let me actually change the resolution to something a little bit smaller. Right, so if we open up the command line, you can see how Creation Platform is launched and it's loading up that exact same Flora application. Um, and then finally, it, you know, well, we just pull over here, you can see how it. Uh, generated the topology, it generated these uh, shaders that you can see. So, you know, we have the um, green on the first layer, the blue on the second layer, and then we have curves which are white and the leaves using the opacity maps, as you can see, correctly um, been distributed onto here. Uh, so, that's it. That's the overview. Um, let me know what you think, and uh, thanks for your attention. Cheers.